Andreas, welcome to Wealth Talk today. Hi there. How are we? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Good to have you on. And uh, of course, you featured earlier this week in our Wealth Builders Academy, sort of monthly members and uh, partner spotlight call. So uh, it was really good to hear you share your progress recently. And we thought, well, uh, let's tell the full story on the podcast for everyone else. So uh, here we go today. So uh, as as we always like to do on these monthly spotlights, Andreas, is really just walk through the nine-step recurring revenue roadmap. And uh, we know the roadmap's broken down into three stages. Uh, we've got building confidence at the beginning, which consists of mindset, foundation, and, and getting your roof in place. And then stage two is all about building knowledge. That's where we look at the seven pillars, look at the different points of leverage, and then deciding on what's the right strategy for you to start generating income. And then the final stage of the roadmap, stage three, is all about building assets. So that's where you focus on one thing, you turn the wheel of wealth, and that should generate some capital or cash flow. And then by turning multiple wheels, um, accelerating your way towards your financial goals. So, um, Andreas, you joined us back in July 2020. So um, about a year and a half or so now. Yeah, seems quite quite long ago. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was a, a crazy, crazy few months, hey, uh, that we had since then. So, um, okay, let's get stuck into this then, Andreas. Um, you've been a great member of Wealth Builders, and you've made some really, really good progress, especially recently, where you've really topped up your thermometer. So let's begin at the beginning, um, at step one. So step one is all about mindset. It's about really thinking about the big picture, and also like the catalyst. So can you remember, you know, was there a particular point, Andreas, where you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to do something about building my wealth now yeah I, I think it was you know pre pre-pandemic just probably a year before before everything kicked in um you know work was becoming a little bit more you know stressful both from a mental and physical points of view so it was almost reaching a, a breaking point and it you know i think the whole pandemic uh situation and working from home gave the opportunity to take a little bit of a step back to reassess life, you know, what's important. I think that was pretty much the, the turning point for me to say, okay, something needs to give, um, you know, one, changing my role, but also from from an income security point of view, um, given the, 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 the unfortunate circumstances that happened in, in the pandemic, I thought, you know, something, you know, we need to be building more from a, from a legacy point of view as well. So I think that was a a turning point for me in my in my journey to kickstart my my wealth uh, building process. Mm. And can you remember how you first came across Wealth Builders and and what helped you decide to uh, to join us? Yeah, I, I think you know dabbling in uh, at the beginning. I think it needed a little bit more you know accountability and a bit more focus. And you know, following uh, Kevin's uh, presentation at one of the networking events that I attend. Um, you know, I, I feel that was something needed um, to, to provide that that full end to end process and having making sure there's there's that that focus in place. I think that was the the, the bit where I came across wealth wealth builders. Okay, so uh, first things we need to do is obviously the uh the levels of wealth you know understanding how big that gap is from where you are now to where you want to get to so um obviously insecurity at the bottom then security is the first goal for people then independence where were you when you joined us andreas so i was very on the bottom scale of the insecurity i think uh, you know very early stages not really meeting that 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 security level so i was more on, on the other side when i when i first joined Okay, great. So firmly focused on reaching security, which is uh, definitely within sight now. We'll come on to that when we look at the results in a little little later. Um, and then the other aspect of, of the foundational stage is, of course, just making sure you've really got a tight roof on top of everything to uh, make sure you've protected yourself, your assets. And, um, you know, how important was that just to make sure that that was all in place, Andres? Yeah, I think that, that was, you know, a critical part because I think pre pre joining wealth builders I, I did go through a, a series of you know making sure having um you know life insurance um all, all the all the works to make sure everything is watertight coming from my background as well you know uh, growing up has not been you know in terms of security as well so 
you know, even from the pension side, making sure having a nominated beneficiary, if in the event something were to, you know, God forbid, were to happen, everything is it's it's watertight, and also have, making sure there's a will in place, powers of attorney, uh, both for finances and welfare. So that that was, you know, I think the crucial part before, you know, getting stuck into building wealth. I think is always important to have that that roof in place. Yeah, yeah, very much is. So that made sure that you had a strong foundation there. And as you say, then you can really build uh, firmly upon that. So moving into stage two, then, Andreas, so looking at the assets, uh, which is step four. So we know the seven different pillars to build wealth, which did you already have in place when you joined us? And uh, which pillars have you been able to utilize since? So yeah, I think in terms of you know coming from my background in in finance and and risk management, so I I did have exposure in the property pillar. Um, that that was my primary focus in terms of what I'm currently working on or worked on previously, um, but also with a bit of um, the 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 investment portfolio from stocks and shares. So th those were the the two prominent uh, pillars that I had before joining J, um, uh, Wealth Builders. Okay, perfect. And then once you understand which you're, you're going to be a primary, secondary pillars, then you've got to look at your points of leverage. This is really, really key. And there's different types of leverage. Uh, we know there's financial, intellectual relationship systems and time. So can you provide us with an example of how you've brought leverage into play and, and help you build your wealth? Sure. Uh, that's, uh, I think, a, a, a good, good uh, example in terms of like, where I am now, purely because of, you know a little bit time poor, and one in terms of the location I'm in, you know, using um, relationships as a as as a point, you know, utilizing that point, making sure I have the right uh, contacts in the area for me, based on my wealth dynamic as well. It, it's quite easy for me to network and build um, uh, relationships, um, which has been a, a crucial part in what I I currently do now. Purely based, I'm I'm in in London, but all all the the investment portfolio is a little bit up north. So making sure I have trusted um, the trusted power team in in that area. So I think that's that's been uh, a huge benefit for me in my in my in my journey. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and. Uh... Step six is all about strategy. So there's many strategies, obviously, within property, Andreas. Yeah. And what have been the main strategies that, that you've been focusing on to generate income? Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of <laughs> strategies within the, the property pillar. I think that's, you know, sometimes overwhelming, um, but that's probably another topic. But in terms of my primary uh, strategy when I first started out in property was the the, the BRR uh, by... Uh, um, refurb refinance um so that that was my you know almost my bread and butter when i first started out um but recently um you know started to get into more advanced strategies such as freehold to leasehold which is just like a, a an add-on to acquire more buy to let por portfolios um so that those were the, the my main um my main strategies within uh my property pillar yeah yeah, and, and I guess that just comes through experience and time and, and just growing in confidence, right? Like exactly. you turn the wheel once on maybe a buy to let, something, you know, relatively simple, and then you, you build up and you start learning from other people around you. And I suppose exactly. being part of a community, you kind of, it rubs off on you, right? Because you're seeing what other people are doing, you're connecting with other people. So, um, yeah, I mean, how have you found the community aspect of things, Andreas? No, it's super useful. I think in terms of you know having a question, even like the freehold to leasehold uh, title splitting that I started doing is something new, but within the community and the support and within the coaching uh, calls that I have on a monthly basis has been pinnacle in in pinning me down and saying, okay, did I have the right support uh, function within within the wealth builder builders community? Um, you know any any questions I may have, it's you know within an arm's reach of you know opening your laptop and reaching out to someone who has already done it or is thinking about it and even partnering and sharing ideas. I think that's that's been super useful instead of being completely isolated and being on your own. Um, I think by sharing 
the experience and and the knowledge i think is you know adds that added level of uh, projection in in terms of you know where you want to get to yeah that's great to hear and, and that leads us nicely on actually to to step seven which is all about focus so once someone's chosen a strategy like you've just mentioned there andreas the key is to follow the wheel of wealth and that means education support connection due diligence and then taking guided action so our wealth coach is there each month to help you stay laser focused and turn that wheel you mentioned your coaching calls there andreas Give your coach a, a shout out because I know many, uh, in fact, all of the coaches listen to the podcast. So who's yeah. been helping you along the way? So, uh, uh, you know, special thanks to, to Ian Halfpenny. Um, I think, you know, starting out at the beginning and not really having a plan um, in place, you know, coming in thinking, you know, you just want to acquire property and that's that's the main goal. But that's not the objective, right? You always need to have a plan. Um, but also to Manish as well. Um, that's that's been helping me out uh, as well with with the whole um, DD side and and you know having a bit more of a focus. But super super you know big big shout out to to both of them in in terms of providing that that guided uh, support uh, throughout the the months uh, since since joining Wealth Builders. Yeah, and no, that's 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 cool. And and what difference does it make kind of knowing that you've got that accountability every 30 days, you know, you've kind of got to report something, even though it's not like being at school, it's yeah. not like, oh, you haven't done what you said you were gonna do. But yeah. you know, in yourself, you know that you've you've got to kind of show up and, and you've hopefully got something to share. Yeah, no, no, I think that's you know, accountability and and making sure every single month, you know, like you said, there's month months that you don't really have that much to report. But sometimes when you do report back and you have that monthly call with your coach, you're actually quite surprised what you've actually accomplished because you know you can easily drift as well. And you know, sometimes at the beginning and even now. There are moments where you have a bit of a dull moment and things are not moving as quickly as as you hoped. And, you know, property is and can be and is a slow moving vehicle. It's not something that you, you know, you go onto the stock market and you just buy shares and, you know, you've acquired something. There is a process. There is, you know, issues along the way. So I think it's just, you know, having that 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 awareness and accountability, I think is, that's crucial. Cool. So we're really moving now and uh, into step eight, which is about results. So uh, we encourage all of our members to track their progress every 30 days using the wealth chart and by completing monthly progress reports as well. So you've had a good couple of months recently, Andreas. So tell us exactly what did you do and how much additional recurring income has that added to your wealth thermometer? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's been a really good, good month. And um you know, it's it's been an opportunity where I've added substantial or meaningful uh, income in my thermometer. So um, I was able to leverage the the title splitting um, strategy in in the property pillar, acquiring six self contained units, which has enabled me to increase my my income by um, one thousand four hundred uh, net for that for that month. So everything is fully rented, money is coming in. So where I where I was, it was at the six hundred level. Now that's bringing me a, a total of of two thousand. So getting closer to that security level now, um, which is scary to think of it. Um, you know, thinking about it where I was at the beginning, acquiring just one property and thinking about you know just the one. Now you're very you know I'm getting to that stage of security, which is a, a really good um, good way of thinking about it and i think you know i'm definitely on track for for achieving that goal uh in in this year 2022 so yeah i think it all comes down to planning and making sure you've got those you know critical milestones and keeping track and then going back to you know the monthly coaching calls and and keeping track of that figure so that's that's been you know the biggest achievement i've i've achieved so far yeah, that's really good. And and uh, I can only imagine what that's doing for your confidence as well. And I guess the feeling of certainty, right, as you say that, look, things always crop up that, that are unexpected along the way, but you know that the process works now. And you know that if you just continue to follow that, you know, how certain do you feel that you are going to hit those goals eventually? 
Yeah, well, I'm already <laughs> looking at you know uh, another project that's quite similar to this, but a little bit more in 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 size. Which you know, it just builds your confidence, and you know, you learn as you go along. Even though this was a completely new strategy, but then it goes back to the relationships and having trusted people around you and their experience and leveraging their time and experience that they've done this in in the in the past. And you know, when it comes to the next deal that I'm looking at now already know what to look out for so you know builds that confidence and that i would say certainty but just gives you that extra push to say actually it is achievable and i can do it even though you get those months where you are a little bit down but again having those calls on a monthly basis just you know resurrects your your focus and and hunger to to reach that that figure Okay, so that takes us into the final step then, Andreas, it's step nine, accelerate. So by repeating the process of choosing your pillar, then choosing your strategy and using leverage, you will move towards a place of financial independence. And for most people, the journey from financial insecurity to independence will take on average about five years. So what do you see as being key to helping you continue to stay focused and take the necessary steps to reach your own financial goals? Yeah, I think... um... You know, again, going back to that five-year average, it sounds, you know, about right. But in terms of the the key elements for me is is the the relationship piece and connections and having you know continuous dialogue with the people that I'm currently working with and continuously meeting new people and you know you you never know what is around the corner in terms of you know you might speak to someone and there's something that comes along in in your favor that helps you propel and get you closer to that to that end goal but also leveraging um funding so something that i've started to to incorporate in in the recent deal that i've i've uh, got over the line and on the title splitting using friends and family uh funding from their side and giving them a, a better return than what they're getting uh through the bank by doing that, that's also given me the opportunity to push and accelerate my my uh, acquisition of of properties faster than using my own money, uh, which is something that I'm looking to leverage a little bit more. Um, but also the accountability piece, and you know, continuously having those coaching calls and the focus group calls, where you know, making sure um, you know you're you're that I'm on track um, to to meet that. Uh, uh, financial independence uh, figure. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for sharing all of your journey with us today, Andreas. We're very much looking forward to uh, you celebrating your financial security this year. I'm sure it won't be too far away. So keep up the great work. Thanks for being a great member of the community. Pleasure, Christian. Thank you very much for having me.